I'm building a tiny vacation home on wheels. Shut up and sit down. Good morning. I look so scary at the red light. <laughs> okay, so I am heading to the airport. I'm going to LA for a day. It's about five o'clock in the morning, way too early for me. So I am now at the parking spot and I'm gonna take the shuttle over to the terminal. And then it's a pretty easy flight, leave at seven, arrive at 8.45 since the time difference. So this should be fun. It's just a one day in LA and I'm gonna check out some van life stuff and some other creature comforts of like Los Angeles that I miss after living there for 10 years. But all right, let's do this. So I made it to the terminal. It's like 5.30 in the morning. It's a lot busier now than it was in January. Um, so yeah, this is, uh, this is pretty smooth. It took me about two minutes to get through, uh, what is it, the TSA check. And I checked in already. And I'm hoping I don't have to actually like check in again. So we'll see. I don't know. I don't know. All right, where's my terminal? Wait, I'm in my terminal. Where's my gate? Welcome, I'm John, your captain. Dan and I have a little fist bump today. There we go. There we go. Hey folks, how's everybody today? John, your captain. Hi, welcome on board everyone. Good to see everyone even sleeping. We've been waiting to reconnect. To seek adventure once again. To share in the moments that matter. Okay, I'm in the car and the first stop is Randy's Donuts. I'm starving. It's about 9 a.m. and it's super overcast, the marine layer. <laughs> it's called fog mixed with smog. So yeah, no sun, no blue sky here. So that's California. $4 for gas. Holy crap, people. This is horrible. I've been here 10 minutes. I want to go back to Texas. <laughs> Okay, so I'm at Randy's and my donut of choice is the Pride Donut because I am a proud ally and it is uh, Pride Month in the month of June. So this is super cool. I also got a matcha green tea, which I might not eat right now. I just want to eat a little bit of sugar and support. So uh, yeah, it's uh, that's super cute. Look at it. It's all rainbowy. Oh my God, it's so good. <laughs> It's so good. 
Oh my god, it's so good. So obviously I'm not stopping. I'm just going to get out of this area. But I'm in Culver City. And right across the street is Seas Candy, the original factory. And when I had Harriet, we used to live just around the corner. And we used to always go and get our free chocolate on our walk in the morning. So this is the metro that they were building about maybe like 10 years ago, 12 years ago when I um, was pregnant with Harriet. And then it opened right as we were leaving Culver City back in 2013. Um, so this goes all the way from downtown to here and then it goes from here to Santa Monica. So it's really great if you just want to take like a day trip and not have to um, actually, you know, like take your car and try to park and stuff. So it's really good to try to reduce congestion uh, and it's fun. It's a fun little metro. I, I forgot how much money it is, but um, yeah, definitely check that out. I'm now in downtown LA and I'm going to head to a few things around here. If I can't find parking right outside, I'll go ahead and just show you it and then I'll show you video of when I previously did it with Harriet or in my life. Um, yeah, so I'm just driving around wasting $4 a gallon gas. I still can't get over that. Oh my God. How did, how did I ever survive here for 10 years in California? And I also went to high school in Orange County, but that was back in the 90s when I didn't have responsibility or a vehicle. So anyway, so yeah, the sun is peeking through and hopefully this shouldn't take long to get around. It's so funny to see so much life after living in Houston. We don't really have like, well, we have a downtown, but we have multiple downtowns and people generally don't walk outside there and they don't really walk anywhere. <laughs> so this is like downtown LA. So much history, so much old whatever, you know, just people and characters. So my next stop is the Angels Flight Railway and I think it had shut down and people revitalized it so I'm going to see if there's parking. I would like to go up in it and last time I was on it was with Harriet and I think it was like 25 cents to go on it one way. So I'm going to see if it's open. Um, I'm just like I said we're kind of driving around so not really too bothered to go on it this time. I've been on it before but definitely you should try it. Be careful, it's not done yet, Mom. Not done yet. Make sure the door's open. Hi! <laughs> what do you think? Do you like it? So it doesn't look like it's running. It's just kind of stopped in the middle. So maybe it only runs on the weekend. I will find out and I will let you know. Um, but if you get a chance to ride it, it's super cute. So over here is the famous Echo Park and it's really pretty. And I'm going to head to a bunch of different colorful staircases that you can like exercise up and run up, I guess. So I'm going to check those out. Not wearing the best of the shoes as usual, but um, we'll see how, how many steps I can climb. I guess this area is Echo Park. It's near Los Files and Silver Lake, if I remember correctly. Really cool, really old neighborhood. Lots of amazing Mexican food. Just super nice people, just kind of doing their thing. So one thing I don't miss about LA is the street sweeping. <laughs> I used to always get so close to getting a street sweeping ticket. Never had a parking ticket, never had a street sweeping ticket. Anyway, but look how gorgeous today is now. This neighborhood is super cute. These are the music box steps and they're right here. And they were in a famous Laurel and Hardy movie. I think it was one of their silent movies. And I guess if you live in these apartments, you constantly have people walking up and down them. But uh, I'll look up the scene if I can find it and post it without you know, having to pay royalties. <laughs> anyway, so this is one set of steps in this area. There's a whole bunch of other painted steps and famous staircases. Uh, there's tons and tons of hills over here. So really good workout. Um, but yeah, if you're interested in um, old movies and, and movie filming locations, uh, this would be a great place to come as well. So here's uh, 
uh, some trivia. The girl on the right went to my high school in the Silver Sun pickups. Um, so she is, uh, she was in a band in high school, in my high school, Los Alamitos, and she's been in the band ever since. On this street is another painted staircase. And this is done by another artist. You can see my rental car right there. Cell phone slavery has begun pretty much. But this is another one that you can walk up. So this set of unsuspecting steps you might think are just another walkway down to the street. But in fact, when you get about halfway down because uh, I parked in a little bit of a red zone, um, you turn around, you have piano keys. <laughs> so, that's another one. It goes all the way down, I think, to Sunset Boulevard or Glendale Boulevard, one of the two. But anyway, this is another one right here. Down the road, there's another set of painted stairs with hearts on it and rainbows. And I'm on Sunset Boulevard and Mikkel Torena Street. So this is Sunset Boulevard. That's pretty cool. Here's another view of the piano key steps from Sunset Boulevard. So if you're able to find parking, there's another set of painted steps right here on Sunset Boulevard. And this one, because I'm kind of a little double parked there, sorry. Uh, this is just rainbow steps, as you can see. Just like this. Here's another painted staircase just off Sunset Boulevard. You have to go around into the neighborhood and come back around and not like illegally park on the street like I just tried to. <laughs> so on yet another pretty street, there is a set of steps over here. It says Sunset Drive. What's this one going to be? <laughs> Let's take a look. I may have already driven past this one before. So these are green, aqua, teal. Actually, Harriet knows the color teal. That was one of her first colors she learned. So this is a teal staircase going up. Well, this is a fun afternoon as I'm just standing next to some random concrete retainer wall, which is for the, you know, when they have fires and stuff because we're in the hills <laughs> and this is Los Angeles where every disaster happens. Anyway, so I think I'm going to look for one or two more of the staircases and then head north a little bit. I have to go up toward Burbank, which I could miss a birthday driving up there. So <laughs> we'll see. Anyway, this is super fun and it's really pretty out here. Um, just gorgeous day. It's warm. Uh, it's smoggy. <laughs> the marine layer is gone. Um, but yeah, I think there's like 14 or 15 of these painted staircases. You can do the walking tour. It's about six miles. It takes about three hours, uh, not including going up and down the stairs. Um, and you can do it, uh, yeah, in like three hour tour and just kind of walk around. There's maps online. I'll link it below. A bit harder to drive, I think. Easier if you're on a bicycle with like no gears because <laughs> you've got to go up hills. Anyway, so um, yeah, I'm just kind of standing next to this wall right here. Okay, I think I'm gonna go. <laughs> Next. So these steps are a little more subtle and I guess they're um, cat prints, bird prints and hooves. Maybe goats, I don't know. But they go all the way up like this. So it's easy to miss. <laughs> um, these are all kind of hidden away. It's kind of fun to try to find them. But this is another set of stairs. So I think this is the last one I'm going to find today and another hidden staircase right here and this one has hearts on it so you know it's a uh, pride month and love wins and all that stuff so hearts are very appropriate I tell you, you definitely get a workout trying to find these staircases and there we go so I'll let you find the rest of them, but here's the start for you. And uh, yeah, definitely come out to Silver Lake and just, you know, patronize the local businesses and um, 
enjoy driving through the narrow streets. It's like a little go-kart track and try to find the staircases. So now I'm in Los Feliz because there's the House of Pies and that was Harriet's first pie place that she went to and when I was pregnant I ate there a lot because I was pregnant uh, but they actually have a house of pies near my house in Houston and they do a really good French silk um, which is awesome and then also a crumble apple pie so I just left Los Feliz area where the house of pies is at and now I'm heading toward Hollywood so I'm on Franklin and I'm heading toward uh, I guess Franklin runs parallel to Sunset Boulevard and Fountain Boulevard and if you ever watch Saturday Night Live they do the whole Californians and they make fun of Fountain Bo Boulevard. <laughs> it's like if you ever get lost just get on Fountain you'll find your way. So I'm now headed toward Hollywood but I'm going to go up toward Burbank and uh, I used to work over in the CNN building just to my left. I uh, worked there for like a year or so and then I worked in the building next door of it about a year after that for two years. So uh, that was right before we moved to Houston. So there's the Hollywood sign and it almost seems like every time I come over here they change how close you can get to it in your car. But I'm actually going to the Garden of Oz. Um, this is a garden that a local lady created and she um, made it so that all the local children could have a key to get into the garden whenever they wanted to so they could forever play. Um, so I probably won't be able to get in but I just wanted to kind of see where it's located and I guess if you live in this beautiful very very expensive neighborhood um, you could also go play in the park. So it's nice I miss coming out here. I haven't been out here in a while and I've been to the Hollywood sign a ton of times. Um, you can actually rent horses and ride horses through the Hollywood Hills, I think over to Burbank. Um, you can also hike Griffith Park, uh, like the canyon up there, and get pretty close to the Hollywood sign. Um, Harry and I went to the Hollywood sign a couple years ago, and she's a trooper. So yeah, anyway, the locals obviously don't want all the tourists, so they keep changing which road you go up to get close to it. So we'll see, see where this leads me today. I'll let this guy go because he's getting mad at me. That's right. Beeping at me the whole way in the, the very most inappropriate vehicle you can drive in Los Angeles, a Texas pickup truck. <laughs> so this is Beechwood Drive and it says no vehicle access to the Hollywood sign. You used to be able to go up this way and like I said, they keep changing it. I guess the streets might take turns and who gets all the tourists. Um, but yeah, just let these people go. I tell you, like, if you get a rental car, get a smart car. My little Kia Soul rental car that I have right now, it's a trooper, but <laughs> it's not doing very well on these roads. There's a lot of close calls. Um, anyway, so yeah, let me see where this garden's at. Then after this, I head up to Burbank. So right on this road in this residential neighborhood, there is the Garden of Oz. And there's an artist that made this garden. So she made this mosaic. Look how cute that is. And uh, yeah, I guess she uh, created like this little pocket park. That's what they call it. And then this is just for the local children. So they all have a key to get in. And obviously we can't get in there, although it's not locked. Well, maybe it is locked. I don't know. But anyway, but this is the, um, does it say, I paint so I can have money to buy plants. Lord Monet. Well, he has no Monet, <laughs> right? Oh, it says no photos. May peace be in our homes and communities. So this is a really, really cool um, little community garden. And yeah, it's beautiful. There's a little tin man. <laughs> this is a very much an artist community, uh, especially like the Silver Lake, like the Hollywood Hills area. There's a lot of artists that live up here, um, you know, create their work and so on. But this is awesome. 
really pretty. Maybe a music video, I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. I'm like, who are they filming? Film crew. So I worked in a building in Sepulveda Boulevard, um, no, El Segundo, um, yeah. years ago, like back in 2006, and they were filming the Die Hard, uh, Live Free and Die Hard. And so like every day, we couldn't get to our office because they were just blowing things up for Bruce Willis. It was super funny. Um, and then my other, I don't know where I'm going, um, and then one of my other companies I worked for would always rent out the um, office building and they'd always send a memo that said, you know, we apologize, but we're yet again whoring out our uh, office to another production company. <laughs> so they would always film like obviously office scenes and stuff. So this is a dead end. Oh, I tell you, there are no restrooms in Los Angeles. I have needed the restroom for the last hour and a half. <laughs> and there are no public restrooms in any gas stations or anything. So I'm, I have to find a supermarket or something. Uh, anyway, so now I'm heading to Burbank. I was gonna see this, you know, try to see what this uh, movie crew was doing. They're filming at a diner and a guy had a guitar. So I don't think it's a music video. Who knows? I don't know. <laughs> There's a lot of sordid stuff going on here in Los Angeles. Every day, just normal thing. Our oh, film crew, you know. I don't know who's filming. It's a pretty elaborate setup they got over there though. I don't know. That was that was my life for a couple years working in the movie industry. I enjoyed it, but it's not a glamorous job. You think it's a glamorous job? You're completely, completely spaced out. So now I'm heading up toward Universal Studios in Burbank. Uh, I was told there's a salvage yard where you can rip parts off RVs and vans and things for your van conversion. So I'm going to go talk to them and see if that is true. And that way, if you guys are in Los Angeles and you need, you know, a new fender or something, uh, you can just go up there and get parts for your van. I've now made it to Burbank area, Laurel Canyon, I guess. And there's a lot of like, like permanently parked RVs. Uh, camper homes like Mad Max style I you know it's funny it's like a lot of van lifers are like oh it's so hard to like park somewhere in, in California like the state parks and campgrounds and then you got guys in the city that part of my French are just like yeah fuck it <laughs> I'm just gonna park here on Laurel Canyon I don't care so they were back there I don't want to take video of them because I don't know <laughs> uh, there's also a skate park up here like for skateboarding um, and you know we're pretty much not really the 909 but <laughs> close enough so yeah I'm gonna see where uh, this is actually called Sun City uh, salvage yards and there's a bunch of salvage yards up here uh, just near Burbank like Oxnard I guess I don't know um, I'll link it but yeah so the or I'll put a little graphic on the screen like right now so you can kind of see the map so there's a bunch of salvage yards I'm just I just picked one of them to go to and then I'll see what's around. So the idea is to find, like, to see if it's a place where you can just go rip parts off for things that aren't just cars. Things that are like, you know, camper homes and stuff. Like if you need new doors or windows or whatever it is. So I don't need anything for Prudence right now. But if you do, and you are in California, uh, I'm gonna also, hopefully they'll talk to me. I wanna see kind of like how much it costs, I've never gone to a salvage yard before, so I really don't know how the process works. Um, so, I don't know, we'll see. So that's one of the salvage yards over there. I just see car parts. Somebody had uh, taken a photo of this area for me and sent it to me saying that it was, um, there's a bunch of like RVs on the road. Although they may have been the homeless people that I saw earlier. 
not necessarily ones you can like rip parts off. There's some Nissan parts if I need something. <laughs> the wrecker yard as they call it. Okay, so this is the place where the guy took the photo, but I think people live in these RVs. I don't think these are things you can like take parts off. Yeah, he was like, yeah, all these like RVs, you can just take stuff off. I'm like, I, I think these are people's homes, quite possibly. <laughs> I don't know. Let's drive down a little bit further. Yeah, I think these are like camps for people. I don't know. I mean, I don't know what's going on down here. There's a refrigerator. Anyone need a new fridge? This looks like, yeah, this looks like people are living here. I mean, if you have a, like a social tarp and a canopy set up, but this could also be junkyard. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> Someone painted fuck Cali. Yeah, you're in California, sir. Okay, so I'm gonna go ask this place down behind me what's going on with this. I don't think these are for people to take. I think these are people's homes right now. So I think this is the city dump. There's people in line. Yeah, I don't know. What do you think? Do you think these are um, people's homes or things that you can rip parts off? I don't know. It would be nice if somebody could have a salvage yard for like cargo vans and all that stuff. I, I think they would make bank, you know, being able to uh, cater to the industry, as they say. But yeah, I think this is like Skid Row over here. I don't think any of this uh, is really salvageable, even if it's attached to a vehicle. So yeah, these look uh, these look pretty well lived in over here. One guy's like plugged in. I don't know where he's plugged in. This is fun. Weird. Oh, men's hair salon. Yeah, there's definitely people living here. That guy's plugged in. That's a hair salon. There's the uh, little ice box again. <laughs> I don't know. Spare mattress. This looks like my car when I got in a car crash. So yeah, let me go talk to the salvage yard over here and just see what they what they think. There's a wheelchair. You know, there's many reasons why aliens don't land, and I'm pretty sure it's because um, we just have so much crap in our world. But anyway, people are so impatient here, LA people. What is this, Texas? <laughs> Actually, people drive really, like, defensively here, um, or defenseless. So I actually feel safer driving in Los Angeles because everyone's always looking out for each other um, since it's so crazy. But yeah, let me see Jun Junior's Auto Part and Salvage over here. So that's the place I put in to my map. So let me go talk to them. Okay, so the guy at Junior's Salvage Yard confirmed that all those um, RVs that I saw were homeless people. <laughs> I was like, yeah, there's like a hair salon set up and somebody's plugged in somewhere. So he said if I go next door, uh, that's a pull parts off cars place and they might have vans. So basically the reason I'm doing this, why I'm taking time out of my day <laughs> to go all the way up here is because there's a lot of false information online and you know truth in travel truth in journalism is super important so i will take one for the team and i will research which is what i do as a travel researcher and find out why um you know what um what's going on and why somebody would say you can do this and then find out that you can't actually do it so it would suck if you tried pulling stuff off somebody's little abandoned home that they're living in anyway so i'm going to go to the next place and i think i'm going to backtrack and go do something fun <laughs> um you know not these wild goose chases of trying to find salvage yards but it's helpful so if somebody tells you hey yeah you can go you know pull parts off these rvs it, it's not true so let me try next door see what happens there and then i think i'm gonna head back to santa monica maybe drive down pch and i have to go back toward the airport freshen up a little bit and then i'm heading out to dinner with some friends 
this is the pick your part yard but this is the exit so I got to find the entrance and I just want to know if they have any vans that's really what I'm looking for so I guess you pay three dollars and you can just pick what you need and they will search your toolboxes and purses so maybe this is a good place oh, I see a uh, I see a Volkswagen. I see a couple of trucks in there. Okay, so I'm not gonna go in, because, um, you know. <laughs> All right, so anyway, I will link the address to this place. You can go in and you can uh, pull parts off vans. It does look like they have vans. Uh, pickup trucks, they have, um, I saw some VW, uh, like T4s, Volkswagen T4s, Volkswagen uh, Winnebago's. Um, I know those parts are really like, you know, hard to find sometimes and, and a lot of times like with Japanese cars everything is interchangeable pretty much but when you get some of these older American vehicles um, you have to, you know, find the vehicle. So I'm not going to go in, there's a gate, you just park and walk in, I guess you can't just drive your car in and take what you need. So maybe bring like a dolly or something. So anyway, so that's an option if you're looking into like, you know, really hardcore renovating your vehicle. And doing you know something spectacular so I'm gonna get out of here it smells like grease and sewer <laughs> no, I'm just kidding I actually it smells like tacos and that's why I'm getting out of here because I'm still vegan I don't know why I'm still vegan but I'm like I really would love a carnita taco or like an adobada or you know just <laughs> something really good and meaty and if I stay here I'm just gonna get like like a sad stomach so I'm gonna actually go get a snack right now and then head, uh, I think I'm gonna head toward the beach and go drive down PCH since I have a rental car. <laughs> burn through the, the gas. I probably burned through about $60 worth of gas, like three gallons so far. It's so expensive. Why? Why is it so expensive? So I'm on the 405 freeway. Traffic is slowing down a little bit. Uh, the Getty Museum is up there on the hill and I uh, was here years ago at the Skirball Center which is just right over on the, the right hand side here um, and they had a Halloween party that they had planned on Facebook and I think this was like 2008 this was kind of when we were starting to all get on social media well what they did is they put it as a public party so instead of 1800 people showing up there were like 5,000 people packed into the Skirball Center I had gone with a friend of mine, he dressed up as a priest, I was a Catholic schoolgirl. Um, but then like there were multiple like iterations of priest. So there was like the pregnant priest, like the, uh, uh, you know, like the uh, drag queen priest and the, you know, uh, it was just funny. And then, there was, you know, tons of people had like the costumes of the day. So there's a lot of like Alan from The Hangover and then there were pilots with laptops because apparently there were some pilots that were watching like pornography and overshot the runway um so there's just it was just silly but we got stuck and like my group of friends lost each other like we couldn't find each other <laughs> and valet parking just gave up parking cars after about two hours into the party because thousands of people showed up it was a disaster it was fun though it was a free party i was like well i got here early so um but i couldn't get out i had to crowd surf a little bit which you know my outfit wasn't conducive to being like you know handled through a crowd above their heads it was just a bad night I was glad that that part of my life is over because I was and I don't drink so I was completely sober my friend doesn't drink either and so he was completely sober and we were just like I feel like we're too like perceptively aware of what's going on right now like this is actually terrifying anyway all right so I'm just driving down PCH I'll probably go past my old house and then I'm just gonna go not PCH 405 and then get onto PCH and just kind of drive down the coast back to my hotel and then freshen up for dinner so much of me wishes I had my stick shift Mini Cooper so I could race this McLaren in front of me <laughs> no it's like why would you drive a, a race car in Los Angeles we don't go more than 35 miles an hour on any given day <laughs> But still, I can still race you. So now I'm in Pacific Palisades and this is the Pacific Ocean. 
there is the beach and it goes down to Santa Monica Beach down there. So I used to ride my bike and rollerblade on this bike path pretty much every weekend, about 20 miles total. And then Harry and I would ride when we came out a couple years ago, we rode and got to see all the eye candy of all the Santa Monica Fire Department. So I, I shan't complain if I see hot firemen. Yeah. But this is nice, really like overcast again. This is the marine layer, which they give a fancy name to the word fog. It's just fog, it's not a marine layer. Anyway, it's about 65 degrees now. It was 81 degrees over in Hollywood, not too far away, like less than 10 miles away. And now it's down to like the, you know, 60s. So there you go, that's California for you. Boulevard in Santa Monica and when I was like 15 years old I took driver education and this is where I did my like real driving uh, training is we drove up and down Ocean Boulevard and then we drove down to Disneyland in Orange County and we spent like three days driving the car it's pretty awesome so this is the part where I lose a birthday getting on the 405 South <laughs> uh, wish me luck it may take me years just to go 20 miles I just have to say it's taking me 40 minutes to go 10 miles I did this commute for five years when I lived in Long Beach and I lived in uh, worked in Manhattan Beach and then worked in Santa Monica and then eventually I moved up to Santa Monica and it still took me 40 minutes to go 10 miles this is crazy this is rush hour traffic every single day so anyone that complains about traffic in their cities you know just know that there's many of us that paid our dues here in Los Angeles and Long Beach this is crazy. <laughs> I cannot believe I put up with this. I'm okay right now, but if I was doing this every day again, getting up at 4 a.m. to go to the gym and then watching a movie after work and get home at 10 or 11 o'clock at night and still being stuck in traffic. Yeah, that was my 20s and most of my 30s. So thankfully Houston is not like this. <laughs> it doesn't have any traffic. This is crazy. This is the Long Beach port where the Queen Mary's at and it's also uh, the um, Shoreline Drive. This is where they do the Long Beach Grand Prix uh, racetrack. So there's Long Beach. I love LBC. I love it here. It's so nice. Such an old community. It's awesome. Anyway, so this is what they, they create the racetrack out of uh, every year for the Grand Prix. And you can see like, I think one time like William Shatner was driving and he was going like 20 miles an hour. So I think he was like 90 years old or something. But I rode on here in my Mini Cooper years ago when it was still the racetrack and I got kicked off. They were like, them. I'm like, what? <laughs> I'm driving, let me drive. Um, I also had my prom dinner here when I was in high school, my senior prom. Uh, we had our dinner here and then went, went to the uh, little prom thing in Orange County. But I love it down here. Shoreline Village, that's the place. That's the convention center. This is the Aquarium of the Pacific and the Queen Mary. And then over here is Shoreline Village, which they only built like maybe about like 25 years ago. I think it was right when I was in high school it opened. Um, but they used to have roller coaster and everything. And I guess they don't have it anymore. <laughs> so it's like kind of like a Coney Island thing. So I guess they were like revitalizing the whole area. Um, they also have like shopping malls and stuff, other stuff that I don't really care for, but you might. So it's here if you need it. Um, this is really great. And uh, I remember when this was just nothing, it was just a big park. Um, and then they just built everything. So I guess they have a Ferris wheel over there. Um, but yes, yeah, it's beautiful. I would love to do the Grand Prix though. <laughs>
number one for departure. Flight attendants, please prepare the cabin.